Okay, now I'm recording. I was about to write C recording. All right. So documentation, right? Yep. All right. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. And so, yeah, okay. All right. Great. All right. So the other thing is we don't have, can you open the test cases for this as well? Uh, you, yeah. Uh, the shell files, right? Uh, no, just the, just the, the test. So in actually in VS code here, uh, you might just want to open the, the whole file or the whole folder. Uh, oh, all right. Yeah, Cause we're, we're going to be moving around a little bit here. Um, and I would open the one that's, that's, uh, I would open the very top this? level. Uh, I would open the top level. So DFFML itself. Oh, yeah. All that's, right. This is probably the folder you want here. Um, uh, all right. So how do we do okay on this? Uh, I hope that opened the right one. All right, okay, whatever it opened yeah. the model. All right, okay, that's that's fine. Um, all right, so let's look at the in the tests, yeah, and then um, and then let's look at the anomaly detection. Great. All right, so are you running? Are you doing? Are you importing run console test in here? Okay, it doesn't look like you are. All right. Okay. So we're going to want to, imp okay. So let's see, how are we testing it right now? Let's just scroll through all the tests. Um, uh, we're testing it using random data. Okay. Yeah. So we're just, this is, this is the regular Python test that we're looking at here. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then can you scroll all the way down for me? Just... Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. So yeah, all right. So yeah, at the bottom of this, we'll we'll want to do the we'll run or do the run console test stuff. Um, and I think, oh yeah, what did I what did we settle on? Okay, yeah. So I just and I just had some, and this is good. So I just was running through it um, last night, and I noticed that um, I noticed that uh, the since since all of these so since all of the models get built on the documentation page under the plugins page um the file paths end up needing to be relative to the um plugin themselves uh or to the to the to the documentation route um the so the file paths when you do literal include and stuff we need we need to make sure that they're they're relative to the root of the documentation um so as if we're in that docs folder um at the top oh. level um yeah so if you jump over to the to the file um to the to the model file itself i'll show you what i'm talking about here um yeah and yeah, this i think i understand yeah. yeah yeah this is just because it's getting displayed basically the the markdown that's in the body here yeah. it's getting pasted in there so yeah so this is perfect what you've done here with the literal include is exactly what we need to do you have to do that slash dot dot slash because that slash is going to say okay basically treat this as the root of the documentation and then dot dot says okay go above that so now we're in the very top level directory the one that we uh, weren't able to open unfortunately um so and then go into model and then scratch examples so 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 you did that this is exactly correct now the one thing Oh, another thing here is that you'll notice that these backslashes are highlighted um, in the train command. Um, and that yeah. is, and, and it looks like we're also, uh, we have spaces in between the uh, hyphens. And so, so we, we want to remove those spaces. So when you have behind on the next line, yeah, so hyphen space uh, sources. You're talking, about, you're, you're talking about the trailing white space problem, right? Uh, sorry, what? The DFFML train uh, command. Yeah, so you basically want me to remove the trailing space that we have so that... Yeah, yeah, see how the other commands don't have a space behind the hyphen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so let's, let's remove oh, this. Yeah, 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 and fix that. Um, okay, yeah. yeah, so, so yeah, let me, and, and I can, okay, so, so let's, can you just do that right now? Because that's only going to take two seconds, so the, in, just in the train command. Um, well, don't yeah. worry about this. So don't worry about the, the backslashes. Um, how do I... I don't know. How yes. do I figure out... Well, so go to the train command. 
or so so sorry don't worry about the backslashes right now so just just you can leave that backslash there i'm uh, just i'm just okay. talking about that what? so that yeah so that don't worry about that right now just yeah. in the train command you see how you have yeah. the spaces in between hyphen and sources and hyphen and model the the dash there you have a a, a dash and then space model so the uh, next... in line 137 to 142 yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, let's just. This is what you're talking about, right? Yep. Yep. Let's yeah. just delete those. Um. Perfect. Oh. Okay. Um. Uh, do you want me to do the same thing for sources as well? Yep. Yep. Yeah, because this is all. Yeah. So yeah, all of these are command line flags, and so so the the hyphen needs to be sort of attached to the rest of that. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that that that'll fix that. Now now the thing is, you'll notice that the the your editor is highlighting those backslashes because it's treating those as a literal escape. So um, it's when you have a backslash and then a new line, it's saying, okay, basically ignore the new line. So treat this as if there's no new line there. So the way that we can actually, we, we can make it not treat it that way by prefixing this block comment um, with a, the, the letter R. So if you scroll to the top of this, this document, this doc string here, and you put an R in front of your three quotes. So at the very top of your doc string, next to the class definition, yeah. So if you see those three quotes and you put an R R in front of that, so just R quote quote quote. So in front is of this. Uh, sorry, on the other side of the quotes. So on the left hand oh. side, yeah. There you go. This? Yeah. Now you'll see that those those backslashes aren't yeah, highlighted. Yeah. yeah. Aren't highlighted yeah, because it's treating it as a raw string. Okay. Cool. So that that's sort of our yeah that's our our first stuff here. So now we're gonna want to um, now now we need to uh, okay so now we need to look at the CSV files. So um, so right. you said that you weren't you weren't able to get the the CSV files. Um, uh, so you put in CSV files and then you put in SH files to create the CSV files. So to as as the um, the, the way that we're, we're trying to go with this is we'll just put them directly into the doc string um, and that, that'll keep everything together here. So let's take the, for whatever the first one is, it's probably the training one, right? So open the training yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, so copy the yeah. contents of this file. Yeah, um, you told me how to do this last time, but uh, the reason I didn't do it was it made the documentation a bit, a bit cluttered. So, yeah, yeah. So, well, and that's the thing, right? And that's why we talked about maybe having a function that just generates the data, right? So, if you, if we, we could have a function that generates the data, or we could, um, or we can just paste in, you know, a minimal, a minimal um, CSV file or whatever that will allow us to train a model, um, you know, with the least data possible, right? So, in this case, what we opted yeah, we, for, we can we can paste this like yeah it, it, it's going to be slightly cluttered but i think overall it's going to look okay yeah i mean and and the thing is at the end of the day the literal include is going to just paste it in on the end in, to the end users page right and that doc string is going to yeah, be yeah. a little bit long anyways right but but we're keeping all of it together in the same place right um so so yeah so let's just copy this and go over to the model itself and and we'll we'll do the uh We'll do the um, we'll, we'll replace the little literal include with the contents itself. So, and the way that we do we do this is um, so yeah, you can just delete that whole line there, and you can paste in the data. So we'll paste in the data, and then let's make sure that the indentation. So let's put yeah. So indent that twice, um, and, and then indent the the header once. All right. Um, okay, so and then we're gonna. So this is the body of what's going to be a code block. So so above this, the line above a y. Um, mm -hmm. Let's put dot dot code block. So dot dot space code uh, dash block, and then colon colon. All right, and let's put a space in between um, the dot dot and code block. All right, great. And then you're going to need a, a new line um, right immediately following the code block. So, so, and then here you're going to indent one more time, and you're going to write colon test. 
and then so that's going to say that that this is one of the things that console test is going to uh, so the the console test plugin is going to to do something with this because you put test there. If you don't put test there, it's just going to ignore it, right? And then so now this is the other thing, and this so this is also all of this is on the 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 documentation, which I'll put the link to. But um, then put enter and then do colon file path and then do whatever you want the file path to be. So, oh, all right. And that will result in this getting written out as the file. And so this is just going to make it so that we have everything in one place. Um, and the, the strategy... This, yeah. yeah, so what this will basically do is uh, it will sort of save us the time and the space of creating the SH files as well as the CSV files. Yeah, exactly. And then, then we we track everything in this one file, which is where the implementation is. So we're keeping the, the testing as close to the implementation as possible here. Um, and, and yeah, we don't have to make other files and stuff. Now, the one exception to this is Python files. Um, so when, when you have the example that, the Python example that you have at the end here, uh, the literal include of the Python yeah. file. Yeah. So that we do want to do in a separate file because the auto for formatter is going to pick it up. Um, and we wouldn't be able to use the auto formatter um, unless, unless we put it in its own file there. So... Um... The CSV files that I'm using in the Python console test should remain there. I can remove the SH files, but uh, the so you can, files that I'm using you can remove the CSV and the and the SH files in that examples directory. Um, and the reason for that is is um, so the reason for that is because you're putting so when you run console so let's let's go up to the top first and, and finish the csv file while i uh, sort of explain a little more so so let's put file path uh so code block and then test and then on the next line colon file path colon and then whatever you want the test file to be named file path colon space and then whatever you want the test file so train dot csv yep all right, yep. and then the other thing is that we usually I do the same thing for the test data set as well. Yeah, the same thing for the test. And the one last thing is above the code block, we've been we've had yeah. this. Yeah, we have this convention of the bold file name. Yeah, to tell people what file to write it in. Perfect. All right, so yeah, now this will this will. And did you did you try this initially, or did you was it something else that sort of got you stuck there? Um, the re I tried doing this. Uh, the reason I did not implement this because I thought uh, that I won't be able to use it in the Python file. Ah, okay, yeah, and so so yeah, and that's that's sort of where I'm going with this. Is so if you anything so the the basically each whenever you're doing the console test plugin on a doc string, it gets its own temporary directory. Um, and, and so everything has to be created. Everything has to happen within, uh, within this docs, within the doc string so that, um, so that, um, so that all, so basically if you need anything, you have to do it in the doc string so that it, it, shows up in the temporary directory and that prevents us from uh accidentally not giving the end user something um because we could accidentally forget to you know if we put a file in some directory and then we're relying on it um we've had times where we forget to actually tell the end user where that file is um, and so by creating the temporary direct basically when you run console test it creates a temporary directory and cds to that temporary directory which is empty and so anything um Anything that uh, I so I, I saw your message, Natesh. Um, anything that you need for the test, you have to do in the test, basically, right? Um, so what you've done here now is you've said, okay, the user is going to create these two files, right? You told them to create these two files, basically, or and then you're telling them to train the model. So when you say test and file path it's going to write out the contents of this to that file. So now it'll be in that temporary directory. So when you, when console test gets done with the first code block and the second code block, you'll have training ex.csv and test ex.csv in that temporary directory. And so, yeah, cool. Got it. 
and then when you run the train so, command, it'll now be accessible. To, so it'll be accessible to all this, the, the next commands. And so the one thing that we're missing here is you have this literal include on the Python usage, but you haven't, we haven't actually copied that file. So you literal included it, but you haven't copied it into this test directory to be tested yet. Um, so did you have any right. questions before we do this? Uh, no, okay. I think I'm following. Okay, so, yeah. and this is basically, we're going to basically do the same thing um, where you're going to copy, you can copy that test and file path, and we're going to just paste that under the little literal include um, because the literal include needs the, the same. Python documentation? Yeah, so if you just, on the next line after this line, if you make a new line, um, All right. yeah, or yeah, right there. Uh, so write the line immediately following literal include. So 219. So if you go on line 219, uh, wait, so just on line 219 and then indent yeah. twice and put colon test colon. That's it. There you go. Remove one indentation level here. All right, great. Yeah, so now what this is going to say is it's going to, um, it's going to put this it's going to copy this file. If you put test on the literal include, it'll copy the file into the temporary directory. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the the um, console test extension um, documentation into the the uh, meeting minutes here, um, just so that we because this this should have all of the stuff that we're talking about. Um, and you can, if you put file path, you can give it another name, but if you don't, you can just, uh, it'll just be this detect outliers .py. The same name. It'll be yeah. the same name unless you put file path. And then we just need to run it. It's our last thing. So in the, the final output code block, let's go look at that. Um, just down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So you have code block and then make it code block console and then just have it run the Python file. Um, so so make sure yeah so put a yeah. yeah dollar sign python detect outliers dot py okay great um and then you're going to need you're going to need to specify that this is a console code block by doing um uh by doing uh uh, you just put console after the colon colon on code block on 224, line 224. So colon colon, yeah, and it's space console. Great. And then, of course, you need to put, you'll need to put test on the next line. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. And then we'll do the running of this. And this is where the, the specific thing that I talked about with the, the documents directory and that slash dot dot comes in all right and okay. and let's remove that line 228 uh, since that's sort of just an extra white space line all right great all right so now we'll save this file and uh then let's go back to the tests um the the right. test file yeah the test anomaly detection uh, all right yeah okay great um and let me i'm gonna go ahead and paste something in so if you go to the to the meeting that we're in right now i'm about to paste in uh to the chat i think we should also check what natasha said so natasha said that he's facing an internet issue and he might not be able to talk okay that is unfortunate um all right let's see damn internet uh, let's see I tried to play Borderlands with my little brother yesterday, and we spent an hour trying to set up the game. It was, it was a mess. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. What am I sending you? I'm sending you the... Is it, it's not Delphi Pi. It is... I think it's this one. Yeah, okay. So... Oops, wrong key.
All right, there we go. So I just pasted it in the chat. All right, I'll put it on Gitter too. Oops, the chat can be annoying. So. Yeah, I got. Okay. Uh, no wait, <laughs> I didn't get it. It's on think, Gitter. It's on uh, Gitter too. It's on Gitter. Yeah. Yeah. Your. Okay, great. So this is basically what we're going to be doing here is is you're going to want to add. Um, so the key here is, is what I learned was that we need to specify the docs router um, because with uh, with the run console test as it is, it will make it so that it will make it so that if you um, if you were to just provided the class it's going to assume that the that all of the includes are relative to the location the the file that the class resides in um, and since that's not true for us you know the locations are relative to the documentation directory so we have to specify the document the where the documentation directory is um, and in this case you'll see and it's the same it's the same for your code that it's in the so if you do the path to this file which in this case is model auto sk learn test test models and they take the third parent yeah. up that would be the the dffml directory um and yeah. then you add docs so that's the docster so we're just going to basically copy that whole test case so async def test doc string um await run console test and then you're going to pass it your model um yeah so yeah, just yeah. You don't need the whole class, but you just need the method. Uh, all so, right. Yeah. I'll figure that out. So I just paste this at the end here. Yeah, just paste it at the end here. Yeah, and then you can just uh, delete the class. I I don't really need the class, do I? Yeah, you can just delete nine line ninety six. Yeah, there you go, and then you can delete line ninety seven. And then you just pass it the model, um, so the the model class. Um, that's it. And yeah, that's it. And then I think you need to import pathlib if you don't have it imported already. Do yeah, I already have it imported. All right, great. So now we can just run that that test case. Um, and let's see. I had a I had a way that I was running test cases yesterday that was I started doing this test um, model. Uh, yeah, if you just run that test case. Um, uh, we had this command to run all the test cases, right? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it's just Python. Um, yeah, this one. Yep, that one. And if you pass, I okay, run. Oh, we got to import that. And I found that if you pass, pass dash K, it'll run just the test case that you want. So if you do um, unit test discover dash K and then um, test doc string, it'll only run test doc string. Um, but we need to import run console test first. So yeah, if you just go over to the, um, yeah, if you can just uh, add to line 15. Um, And you can say comma run run console test. Yeah, there you go. All right, that should work now. No model named anomaly detection. Okay, so have we installed it? Maybe we need to install it. Let's see. Yeah, I think we need to do the pip uninstall reinstall uh, situation. So, or you can do. Let's see. You can do, I think you need to reinstall the package. Um, so let's see, and where? Pip install. Yeah, pip install. this is a command for setup. 
Yeah. I did this when I made the comment last time. I don't know why it's still giving me the error. Anyway. Oh, I think it's in packaging. I think we are. Yeah. Uh, wait, actually, you got to keep keep going down. Actually, it's under entry point registration. I had a, a debate with the PIP maintainers about this. Um, I said that the doesn't pick up when you... Um, this one, or, right? Wait a minute. Why is that not... Yeah, oh, shit. I thought, what's going on? Okay, there's a problem here because this. I swear I changed the. Um, I swear I changed it. Um, it's supposed to say uninstall. It's supposed to say it's supposed to have a flag that says uh, force. Um, force reinstall on it. Where is that? Let's see. Oh, it's only under the should I example. Okay, so this one, this, this, yeah, there's a problem with this example. So you're going to need that command. Um, I added it yeah. to one, but I didn't add it to the other. All right. So you're going to need this command. Um, good catch. Um, same command, only add uh, after install, add dash dash. Uh, yeah, before the dash. So dash dash force, force. dash reinstall. I yeah, okay, so this is key. This is something that needs to be added to everything. Um, I'm glad we caught this because I'm hoping to do, hoping if I can get, yeah. All right, so let's see. Uh, can you make this full screen? Yeah. Great. Okay, so run failed, train, train EX. Okay, anomaly, did, okay, so we, okay, and this is actually, no model named anomaly detection or no module okay so also what's part of what's happening here is let's flip over to the file so you've given this the syntax that you've given is the um is the syntax for if it's just if it's not installed so if you register it as an entry point then you won't specify the model name with a colon you'll just specify it as whatever you put so if you scroll up a little bit more uh so scroll up a little uh, bit more here, just to the class definition. Yeah. yeah, so you put entry point anomaly detection, right? So as, when you put entry point anomaly detection and you register it with setup.py, so you've put it in setup.py and you ran the force, on force reinstall, then you can refer to it by just that short name, that, which is the one that you put in quotes and in, at entry point. You don't have to do, if you scroll down, you'll notice you did anomaly detection colon anomaly model. And so you you can remove... Yeah, yeah I remember doing that. Yeah, so you can, you will we'll want to remove that, that colon right now. Um, so yeah, so we'll just say anomaly detection. So everywhere you have anomaly detection colon anomaly model, it's just anomaly detection. All right, yeah, I think then in the predictions as well. Great. All right, now let's try to run it again. All right. Still okay. giving us some meta. All right, let's see. I think it, it got farther, though. Okay, so anomaly detection was not found in... Um, Uh, yeah, let's scroll up a little bit because the error message is actually above. So it's saying that it didn't find the anomaly detection model. Um, it wrote, so it wrote out, you'll see, yeah, it wrote out the CSV files, which is good, but it didn't find the anomaly detection model for some reason. Um, so in setup.py, and these are the, see that list at the very top of your screen? That's the models that are registered. So I would look in the setup.py for this and uh, and see if maybe if maybe there's a spelling. Um, usually it's a spelling issue. 
Uh, I think it's in the okay. directory above that. Yeah. Uh, no, not in there. D the directory above these. So it's in Scratch. Yeah, it's in the setup.py for Scratch. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, setup.py. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, scroll all the way down. Okay, yeah, so anomaly detection equals, and then I guess the, the question here is, did we spell that the same way? Um, is that spelled correctly? Yeah, okay. Looks, looks right to me. All right. Did we spell it the right way here? Yeah, that's, uh, well, this one is fine, so it's, it's going to be just in the, it just in the the model file itself that we want to look. Yeah. Uh, so look in, I would look in anomaly detection dot py. Okay, yeah. So anomaly detection. And okay, that looks right to me. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is some kind of. There's some kind of. Uh, there's some kind of. Uh, registration issue going on here um i would i would push these changes to the ci um and see what the ci says about it and then you can you can look at your local installation um uh, uh, offline uh, after after the meeting because i think that this should yeah. work it's probably something to so do with I, the yeah so what i'll do right now is i'll remove the yeah, chv and the SH files, files. Yeah. Sweet. I feel uh, I feel that uh, in the DFFML setup.py we also have to add that anomaly detection model. Yeah, we I think we got that. Um, let me see. Yeah. I think we have that. I'm gonna pull it down. I can pull it down and test too. Um, but actually, we'll just let we'll let the CI we'll let the CI look at it. Um. All right, great. So, um, and then is there anything else you wanted to talk about uh, today, Shaw? Uh, yeah, now that I'm done with this, I'll hopefully start working on another model, something uh, that I've been wanting to do uh, cool. for a while. Yeah, so uh, I noticed that uh, we did not have uh, the support vector machine classifier, so I'll hopefully start working on that. Cool. From now on. Cool. Um, if and and this is also just something to keep in mind. Um, as if you're going, if you if you want to implement models from scratch, um, ideally we can do it such that um, you don't have to load all of the data into memory at once, because um, that's that's you know, unfortunately. Uh, part of the limitations of a lot of the other libraries is that you 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 can't pass asynchronous iterators to them. Um, one of them that does have that functionality is the DAL for Pi One. Um, that is nice because you can um, idea ideally we can do these computations or we can if we're implementing models from scratch we can do the the training computations in such a way that you don't have to load the whole data set into memory at the same time. Um, so if you're implementing models, think about, um, just just try to think about that. Um, if, if you have the ability to do that, then try to do it that way. But if you if, you're, if your first pass is just doing it all in memory, that's fine too. Um, but uh, it definitely it definitely is something that we want to we want to trend towards to have um, the the streaming capability. Um, so yeah, does that make sense? What I'm saying there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So um, something so to think about. Would you prefer? Yeah. So f would you prefer it uh, if it was implemented via something like Scikit-Learn, or um, would you like it better if I implemented it from scratch? Well, so the thing is that I think a lot of the Scikit-Learn models are probably already exposed. Um, uh, if they are not, then there's a different way that we, we have a way of exposing the scikit-learn models. Um, so yeah, I think I think SVC is already exists in a scikit-learn model. So yeah, let's check yeah. the 
it's it's the scikit learn classifier or oh, sv classifier in a scikit model let's see yeah let's find it oh. so yeah okay yeah it's under classification scikit svc um on the cool yeah um so it does look like yeah it does look like we have it with scikit so if you wanted to do it then yeah the, then you would probably you'd want to do it from scratch right um and and it's good to have it's good so it's good to have it's good to have implementations of these things um it, if they're well commented um so because you know these can be used as, as examples right um yeah. yeah um if there's already an implementation it doesn't make uh like it'll be more productive to something that doesn't yeah. already exist right yeah yeah so, now the the exception to that is if you can do an implementation that that supports streaming the data um so then that's what i was trying to say there is right. is is if you if you have a way of doing if you want to implement a way of, of doing it that makes it so we don't have to load all the records in at once or you want to spend some time i don't know i think all these scikit ones basically require you to, to yeah the, load it all yeah. at once but they if, work pretty well yeah yeah yes. i try to think of um, an example that helps us to stream the model better but then that i'll try and figure out something to do that isn't already there yep cool that sounds good all right um great yeah and then and then of course you know you, you just just post anything and, and we can all sort of take a look and let you know um our thoughts on it um because yes we there's a lot of models and and <laughs> we may we may bring it up in the meeting um like nitesh noticed that it's already here um will help us make sure that we don't have a duplicate so if you post it and get her that Absolutely. that'd be good or or yeah you can you could probably i would say this is the general pattern is to make if you're going to do something make an issue and then also post about it and get her um because that way you know we have record and issue tracker um and uh and then sort of the the ping goes out to everybody by seeing it and get her right to provide more feedback um and then right. we can always close That's the issue if we decide not to do it all right yeah great thank you, John. yeah thank you all right so let's see um so all right let's see um So Sudhantra, I saw that you got the um, um, the HTTP service. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, um, that's actually going to take a little bit to go over. So uh, Nitesh, um, what do you, what do you? Uh, let's see. We have the 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 your PR. Do you have anything other than your PR that you want to go over today? Uh, actually, I want to talk about the sources okay. uh, the another component of dfm yeah uh, basically i found a uh, two issue related to sources uh, the first one is to develop a new uh, hd uh, 5s i think a uh, different file system mm -hmm. to develop a source for that oh, and HDFS. second thing is yes is second one is about the csv source so okay. yeah and uh, that's 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 the thing that I want to talk about. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, yep. Next. All right. Great. Yep. So HDF five. That's the. The Hadoop stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And we had oh. actually we have a stale pull request related to HD is to Hadoop, the uh, Hadoop network file system. Um, but I don't think it covers the file format itself. I think it covers the file format if it's connected. Um, uh, but I don't think it covers just the flat file format. Um, all right. Okay. It's uh, eight, 845 issue number, I think, 845. Yep. Okay. Are you sharing okay. your screen? Uh, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Thank you. Yeah, I forgot that I stopped sharing. Thank you. Right. Um, <laughs> cool. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I always forget when we switch presenters. Um, all right. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. This issue. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. This was talked about. 
Um, okay, back in September. Uh, oh, yeah, with relation to Sock Shams image stuff. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, we want to do this. Um, is this, this is something you're interested in doing, or do you have something, do you want to just sort of talk more about how, how you might get started doing this? Is that the idea? Uh, actually, I have uh, read this uh, documentation and already uh, get the knowledge about what is the HDF5 format is. Mm -hmm. It's basically a collection of groups, data sets, and uh, a, like a directory kind of, mm -hmm. right? So I just want to uh, know how to start to build it as a source in DFML. Okay. I mean... Uh, that, uh, as an example, in a CSV format, we are going to load or uh, save the CSV format into the CSV file. So how how to do these things into the HDF5 formats? So let's see. Um, all right. So so there's a couple ways, and and there's okay. So there's a couple ways that this works. Um, we have existing infrastructure to basically back things in memory, um, and that's what this 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 uh, simple source for new file types is. Um, and I think, does it mention that we save? Okay, no, that's bad. We should mention that. Dot N I I think. Yeah, I think this is, this is, yeah, this should be mentioning that this is in memory because uh, that, yeah, it's the HDFS is not something that we want to back in memory. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and I think this tutorial is going to be more applicable here. Um, let me just go through it again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is not, this, this tutorial is not as, um, it's not as, this is pretty minimal in terms of explanation, but the, the code here is, I, I don't think you'll have too much trouble with it. Um, and if you do, you can, you can obviously, we we can go over it. Um, but the idea is really, it's, it's similar to the model in that we're going to implement basically three methods. So we implement update, records, and record. Um, and update is to save a record, records is to get all of them, and then record is, is to just get one by its unique key. And so sources as a concept in DFFML basically operate on uh, off the fact that you know everything should have a unique key. Um, and so in, in the HDF5, uh, uh, it's HDF5, right? Yeah. Um, in that, in that format, if you say everything is, you said, it's like, I, I can't, it's been a long time since I looked at that. Um, so let's look at, okay, quick start. Um, okay. File data set. Okay. So you grab the data set and then what is in the data set? There's, I assume there's, yeah. Okay. So there's probably individual objects within the data set, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can make a groups. Groups is uh, act like a directory, okay. and a data set is, is basically a file. So okay. that's how I can map. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah you've got the idea. <laughs> so yeah, whatever you uniquely <laughs> key off of is 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 the record key, yeah. right? So and then yeah, the group would probably be what you you would point it out, right? So you could probably have an option. So for example, with this guy in the config, you're giving it the file name, right? Uh, this is basically yeah. just doing SQLite. Um, so in yours, you'd give it the file name, you'd have your config take the file name to the HD or H5, or the, the file, right, as one of your config properties. And then you might take an optional parameter of the group, right? And if there's no group, then you just, you know, you do the top level and you treat every, um, uh, what was it? What was it called? Every data set as its own record, right? Is that correct? Yeah, data set. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. You're going to have to do some thinking about this um, because I'm not, it's not clear to me. Um, I haven't, I haven't looked at this in a long time, so um, it's not clear. You, you just want to think about how you map this onto the concept of records, right? Because, okay. Yeah. D set Asher's temperature because a record should be like one row in a CSV file type of thing. Right. Um, and uh, so whatever you do here, just try to think about it, you know, like in that concept of, of the, the, the one, the one instance is a record, right? Um, yeah. I yeah. think because, 
HD five is not a single file. It consists uh, directories and nested, even the nested directories. Yeah. So I think I think we need to uh, add another config. Yeah. To groups or data set maybe. Yeah. That that may work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So and yeah, this is where this is where you start to feel it out, right? Um, and yeah. and and I would look. I think that the best way that you're going to do this is look. Go look for some example files or example data sets in this format. Um, because that's going to tell you, you know, really how you need to be using this thing. Um, so, uh, yeah. Does that give you enough to get started there? Or? Yep. Okay, I think. Cool. So, great. Yeah, that'll be great to have that. Um, that's a very, you know, very popular format, and I think that's going to really simplify the the saving and saving as images, because uh, I know that 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 was why we uh, initially had that. All right. So HDF five. Um, We'll look at some example files and the, um, let's see, I think this is a you know, complex source tutorial. Uh, source tutorial. Okay, and I'll link this uh, to start on this. All right. Um, and then did you, do we have, let's see, I looked, I couldn't tell. Were there updates to your um, pull request since last meeting? It looked like maybe. Um, uh, I made the changes as per your reviews, so I okay. think it's. Oh, you force pushed, okay, that's why, that's why. Yeah. Right. Um, let's see. All right, okay. Um, and let's see. I can't remember what we talked about exactly. So, oh yeah, we had the p-expect issue, and then uh, what else did we talk about? Um, okay, it looks like we still just, need to test yeah. this. Um, um, so that would just be. And sometimes I think I've, Sudhanshu knows this, but um, sometimes I'll forget to, if you don't get a response from me and you're wondering why, it's usually because I hit this button instead of this button and forgot to hit submit review. Uh, so uh, feel, feel free to ping me if you're, if you're not getting a response from me. Um, and then let's see, so yeah. Uh, yeah, on this guy, we just want to do... Oh yeah, and I figured out this recently. Mm, it's, lines. It's yeah, still working, but I think uh, I I need to change this in that format. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our test. Yeah. Code. So yeah, we yeah we just need to do this like we had done, um, and and we just done earlier. So what's that iris classification? And then we'll want to do that for both, um, both models type of thing. All right. Um, and then I think, do we have, I think we need to put, um, okay, yeah, so we'll need to do this, so. Yeah, same thing for classifier or regressor. Yep. And then. Same. Okay, so yeah, that's all good. That's all good. Okay, um, good. Um, oh yeah, and then we had that one issue that we uh, needed to figure out with them. Um, there's that that. Um, before I merge this, I need to, okay, and we did run console test, okay, and then the last thing was we need to, let's see, oh, this one seems to work for some reason, why does it work? That's a, okay, that's curious, yeah, why does that work? That's weird, um, or well, I guess I haven't checked the CI logs, but, um, oh, because you're not putting test here, or, 
yeah, it, it works because we hadn't put test here yet. Okay, that makes sense. Right, yeah, it'll fail as soon as we put test there. All right. So, and then when we do that, um, we need to make sure that this is the same thing. So, we just need to um, make sure that we're doing we're specifying the root of the document directory um, because it will fail here as soon as we um, make sure we specify the docs root dir um, so that when we add the test to the literal includes um, it knows where to find the file. All right. Okay, um, and then same thing, so I'll just put same. All right, okay, I think this is good. Um, then, And then the last thing is that, um, you know, we have the issue with the pinning, um, but that's something that, that I'll, I'll basically take care of by updating the pinning test um, after we merge this. So, great, great. Nice, nice job. Uh, any other comments you had on this? Uh, not, not on this. Okay. Cool. All right, great. Um, so let's see, and then so review um, uh, light. It was light DM, right? GM, light GBM, basically. GBM. Yep. So many acronyms. It's just it's sort of my eyes gloss over all the <laughs> acronyms sometimes. <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, and then what was the issue with the CSV source? Um, not an issue. Uh, basically. Uh, in a tutorial, in a documentation, I saw that how to create a source. Mm -hmm. But in case of CSV, I just found a single file uh, that's a csv.py uh, to create a CSV source config and CSV source. So I just want to know how the flow of a program when I uh, make a CSV source. So how is this happening? Uh, can All right. I guess I because, don't really understand what you just said. It's, it's, it's not... Because uh, CSV source is not a separate source, uh, as in a uh, as a MySQL. Oh, it is when actually we... a separate source. Um, so oh, I think I didn't found that. Maybe let's see. Um, I think maybe let's see. Um, so API reference. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Uh, DFML and sources, I think. Okay. So this is the CSV source. Um, yeah. And let's see. So it should be. Um, yeah. Basically, this is only a single file, uh, csv.py. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. CSV.py under um, DFML source csv.py. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so your question was, um, what was your question? Uh, how the the flow of program, basically, when I make a source of CSV file. So what happened? Only this, yeah. what happens? Only this single file is going to run or there's another? Support? Well, okay. So yeah. So when you make, okay. So the thing is that when you make a, when you make a sort, okay. So let's see. What happens when we run? Okay, and, and let me just say, for example, um, so like in, okay, well, this one doesn't use the CSV source. Um, where's the quick start? Okay. Um, because in case of MySQL, we have a separate plugin. So that's why. Uh, yes, okay. So the thing is that um, this has to do in part with the fact that um, um, so, so some some things are maintained as a part of the main library, and some things are maintained as a part of, of separate plugins. Um, so, 
this this in this file you'll you'll see anything that's maintained as a part of the main library in the in the top level setup and so you'll see that csv is under dfml source csv csv source and that's that csv.py um and so the entry point there's a there's a bunch of config infrastructure that loads the various entry points here that are listed here and so when you say on the command line that you want the CS, a CSV source, it'll go and load this class in that DFML source CSV. Um, and, and the way that it does that is, is that that's what you want to know that flow? Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So do we have a good resource on this? Okay. Maybe not. All right. So, okay. It goes... Let's see. We go in from, let's see. Uh, no, this is, yeah, okay. So, are we talking from the command line for or from the Python API? Or, or do you want to know from the command line or from the Python API what happens? Because there's a bit of a different uh, flow. Just, just, just from a Python. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. That's going to be a little more straightforward here. So, um, all right. So we'll just go to the quick start because um, I think that's got a good. It's got a good example of where. Okay. Now where's quick start dot py? All right. All right. So this one. Oh no, it doesn't have quick start file names. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in this example here, um, and this is under the quick start um, on the docs. Um, basically, we create the model, and we give the model, and then we give a file name. And so there's a shorthand that happens in the high level. So these functions, these the train accuracy predict exist within this high level uh, .py, um, and that's sort of an abstraction that's that's going to be be key in understanding what happens here. Um, so let's see, let's running data flows, saving, loading, or here's train. Yeah, okay. Um, so there's some, there's some, some trickery that happens here that if you pass a, if you pass a string, it'll try to look at the extension and then load the appropriate C source based on the extension. So if there's a source with the same entry point as the extension, it'll load that source and just pass that as a file name as the only property. Um, so that's sort of, that's, that's how this ends up working. Um, and then you can also instantiate the class. It'll ins it basically does this. If it sees .csv, it says, okay, well, what source has an entry point of CSV, the file extension? Let me load that source and specify the file name. So this right here is just a shorthand for this. And there's functionality in high level here. Um, where is it? Yeah, records to sources, which does this. Um, and that's this right here where it says file path suffix and then it loads the source um, and then it says file name equals whatever the source or whatever the file name is so that's that's that um, and then the next thing so the alternate right is you just instantiate the class and you pass it the config and then beyond that um, what happens here is that when you pass this to train or accuracy or predict it's immediately you'll notice that so the first thing it does is just do records to sources. And if that's to make it so that you can pass objects here or like, you know, dictionaries here, or you can pass um, instances of the source class, or you can pass the string. So it all goes into this function. And what comes out of this function is this class called sources. And sources is, um, you'll find that in DFFML source source. And so that is a wrapper around, essentially, it, it allows us to treat multiple sources as if they're one source. Um, and, and that's what lets us basically take, um, you know, you could have data for, since all the records are based on a unique key, if you had data for that unique key in a different place, like say you had some data in a CSV file and some data in an image in a directory, the sources the sources class is going to make it so that we combine all of that data and, and the record has all the data from the various sources as long as the unique key is the same. Um, does that make sense? Yep, yep. that's right. cool. Um, and so, yeah, so we come in here and we instantiate all those source classes um, and we put them into this thing, which is essentially a list, the sources class. Um, and then 
once we've got that, we do our and so DFML has this. This basically it's a um, it's a double context entry. So we enter the context of the top level sources class, and then we enter the and and then we enter the context. So we enter the context once, and then we call the class, which returns a object of sources context, and then we enter the context of that context class. So there's this double context double context entry pattern, um, which you can read about a little bit. Um, let's see here, I believe. Um, and this, the reason why we do this is, and you'll you'll notice this when you go through that 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 example, um, the file source, the complex file source example. But it's there's a common pattern with just sort of everything where you'll initiate a connection and then you'll check out a, a so for example, you connect the SQLite database and then your um, and then and then or Okay, a better example is, is maybe a, a network connection, right? So if this was a MySQL source, you'll notice that in the, the top level the top level source itself, you initiate the contact connection to the database and then within the source context, then you're actually checking out a, a cursor object or a connection object. And so since since so many things have this pattern of make the connection and then do what you need within a smaller context. That's the pattern that everything follows in DFFML. Um, and basically it's, it's so that we can head off any potential problems in the future where all of a sudden we need to do that and we can't. So everything follows that. Um, so yeah, then essentially we do the double context entry and now the sources object is uh, so the sources object is wrapping that CSV source. And when we come into train, we'll call uh we'll eventually call something like you know uh rec sources dot uh with features right and the uh, with features um method is in so that is we're calling the train the train methods within your within your model are calling this sources class this sources context class and it's calling these methods here. So it's calling with features, and that you know it's it's going through and it's looking for for records that have those features and it's yielding them. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. And then when you're in here, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, it's calling self records, and that's where it's actually going through the source and it's calling um, the records method on on that source so essentially this this line here is where that csv source dot records method gets called if that the, does that effectively answer your question on what the path is or do you have any more questions on that yep no i think uh, i understand the 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 flow or the pattern uh, in the sources, but uh, definitely I need to watch this video multiple times. So okay. that's that's good. All right, and then and then we can go over it next time too. And I'm actually going to make a note that we want to because we're trying to make notes about uh, little clips of videos. So we'll try to make this into a video clip on how um, how the CSV source works. So what happens when we instantiate a uh, source? Um, how does it get used how does uh, the f code flow from instantiation through high level train predict accuracy um, through uh, to a model calling sources dot records okay um, All right, so I will add a link to the clip in the meeting recording. Yep, cool. All right, great. Anything else? Nope, I think that's it. All right, great. So Sutantu, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, so Sutantu, let's look at the the um, HTTP service. Um, yep. 
and I have a hard stop here at at, at 10:30. I have a, my manager put a meeting on my calendar. So, all right. So, uh, I saw. So, yeah, you wanna you wanna go and let me know what you're thinking here. Yeah. So uh, basically, I have removed the uh, the accuracy method from the model HTTP API model context uh, API. Mm -hmm. And I have added a another endpoint uh, which points to context scorer. So that's what I have done till now. So uh, actually, I have. Can you say that again, real quick? Uh, so I have actually made changes in the API. Mm -hmm. So in the API, I have actually removed the accuracy method, which was actually a model context route. Mm -hmm. And I have added a, a scorer method, a scorer like API endpoint. And for that endpoint, I had some questions. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay, that's uh, this sounds correct. Yeah, because the uh, the 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 meth. Yeah, okay. It sounds you you've got the mapping right. As far as I can remember, it's been a long yeah. time since I touched the HTTP API routes. Um, but I think that sounds correct. Um, all right. Um, so I had two questions. Yeah. So one, so for the model, what we are doing is we had this configure and context uh, endpoints to which we give the call. But uh, for the accuracy scorer, uh, we don't uh, for, for for now we don't have actually the configure part. So do I actually need to create an endpoint for that also? Uh, yes, um, I think that is, I think yes. Um, but if I remember, I don't think it should be too, I think it's pretty much a copy paste effectively. Um, let's take uh, a look though. But actually we are making a post request to that endpoint, to the configure endpoint. Yeah. But we don't have like uh, anything to configure in these scorers as of now. Yeah, as of now, right? But but we we may have something we may have yeah. something in the future, right? So, yeah, um, yeah I think you're basically just going to copy paste this stuff here in MCTX okay. root, and then let's see the two methods model context yep. context model and configure model. Yeah. Okay. And what was it? Yeah, context source. So what is that doing again? Oh yeah, that creates a source context. Oh yeah, that creates the context. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is, it's kind of awkward because it's a direct mapping um, to how it would work in Python. Um, but, but the, yeah, we'll, we'll just, this is sort of just how, how, how we're going to do it for now. Um, because yeah, it's a direct uh, uh, mapping. So, yeah. so I had one more question, like mm -hmm. how, are we, how should I like load the scorer? Because the model, what we are doing is, we are calling model class dot load. Yeah. And, uh, we are providing a parameter to it, and it actually loads the model. So for the accuracy scorer, I don't feel like we have something like that. Well, so I think we can pretty much just copy paste this and change model to accuracy, um, because. So, so there in the model dot load labeled. Um, we are loading the model. So for accuracy, I don't think we have something like that. We should. Okay, if you subclass from entry point, you have the ability to do that. Um, so let's see. Configure. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll copy these. We'll copy these endpoints. So let's take a look at accuracy. Um because if we subclass, if you subclass from entry point, then you have the dot load class method. Um, so accuracy, accuracy, accuracy context, base data flow facilitator object. Okay, that subclass is from entry point. Yeah, so if you call any, if you call accuracy score dot load, it's going to load anything that's registered under the DFFML dot accuracy entry point. Okay. So yeah, you're good to go. You're good to go. If you, I think it's pretty much a, a case of copy pasting those, the configure and the context, and then changing the model accuracy to accuracy score, 
Um, and then I think you'll be pretty much good to go here. Yep. Sweet. Um, so let me just make a note of that. So, um, so yeah, so yeah, and that, then that's, yeah, that is that base entry point thing. That's, that's the purpose of that. Um, so yeah, you have the dot load method. So, uh, so classes, accuracy, score, so classes from, from, so there is an accuracy score dot load class method, which can be used just like model dot load and base source dot load, which base source really needs to be renamed to source, because <laughs> that doesn't really follow the conventions. Um, all right. Great. Um, oops. Anything Anything else on that? So I'll just make uh, no. uh, I have pretty much understood the whole code. Great. Great. So I, I will pretty much be done with this by next week. Great, great. Yeah, yeah. I think this. Yeah, the, I was, I was concerned going into this, but now I'm, I'm thinking about it, and, and I think, yeah, I think, I think there shouldn't be too much to do here. Hopefully, so. Yeah. I think we will need, we will need to add some test cases though too, um, or I guess it's really just modifying the existing accuracy test cases. So. Yeah. Cool. And all, yeah, and also like we had to like merge this. Yeah, we have to merge. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking at that. Have you looked at that at all yet? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, I went and I tried to do a rebase, and uh, well, let me just say it's it's not pretty. <laughs> um, so, and and it shouldn't be that bad. So I'm wondering what's going on, and I think we may want to figure out. We may want to do some uh, sort of grepping through the Git log to figure out which ones we cherry picked. Um, and then and then basically yeah. drop those from the history and then do the rebase um but yeah yeah i think it'll work out it'll work out um but yeah it definitely is going to be a little bit a little bit messy <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's you 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 have a, a big undertaking you've, you've you've done here so all right so copy paste modify configure context and ac uh, model accuracy to be Accuracy score, um, uh, update tests, uh, update JS examples, and .js API. OK. Um, th there may be something else that needs to be updated there, but I can't think of what it is. Um, so I think, I think yeah, I think you found that, that example file. Um, Let's yes. see, did you find the example? Yeah, you found you found this API JS. I think that there's actually something in in the yeah yeah you, know, you okay. I don't think you've modified it here, but there's you know what I'm talking about, right? That yes. okay, yes. cool, cool, great. Um, anything else then? Uh, no, not from my side. Thank All you. right, yeah, thank you. All right, uh, anything from anybody else before we uh, call the meeting then? All right. Well, I will uh, upload the recording. I already got YouTube open here, so that I try not to forget. We'll see. I'll probably forget now that I've, I've tried to remember. But <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys, and I'll uh, I'll talk to you all next week. And, um, just yeah. one last thing, John. You were right. Um, I made the pull request, and yeah, uh, model slash test is failing. Uh, okay. So, so look at that next week. Okay. So, is it? Is it in, is it, okay, well, I'll take a look. We'll take a look at it. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll pull it down and, and we'll, I'll mess with that a little bit because it, it looks like, it looks from, from the review that we just did here, it looks like it should be very close. So it's got to be something wacky. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. Cool. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Bye.